teeth look weird like just in general or like if it's because of this. So while the light is coming through my window pretty decently, I was taking some thumbnails for this, like holding the books that I'm gonna show off. And I think like, and that's why I have this like rash going on right here from like clutching books to my chest. So uh, that's the last time I tried to do a good thumbnail for a video. So from now on, they're gonna be shit. I was not planning on making this video, but then recently I came into possession of quite a large sum of books. So I thought I would put on my best dark academia, librarian, like, English student type outfit and show you all these books that I have come to possess. Uh, one of my friends who lives down in London is going to be heading back to the United States for a little while, um, and so I went to visit her. And while I was there, I noticed that she owned a lot of books, and I was like, oh my god, you've read, you have, you own and have read so many books that, like, I really want to read and that are, like, on my Goodreads, like, to be read list, and she's like, well, I'm going home for a couple months, and I'm subletting my room, and obviously I'm not going to take all these books I've already read with me. Would you like to take some home with you? And I said, oh my god, yes. So uh, this video is sponsored by my friend Megan, who has so graciously let me steal all of her books. Anyways, the, the main event of this book haul is all of the books I stole from my friend Megan. Uh, however, I do have some other books that I have either stolen from other friends or have purchased relatively recently that I that just looked really fun and that I also wanted to show off. So these are some books that have recently come into my possession in like the past month or so. Uh, speaking of which, the first two books I would like to talk about uh, I purchased online from a bookstore in London about a month before I went there because I had been seeing some advertisements for this like new independent bookstore on Instagram and I was like, you know what? I love supporting an independent bookstore and this one is very like horror and gothic based. It's called Shroud Books by the way. They posted like an Instagram picture of two books with really brightly like neon colored covers and I was like, mmm. I want these two books specifically. Uh, not just because of the colors because I'm actually interested in what's inside them as well. I'm very excited to show them to you because they're the two books I purchased from Shroud Books in London is Witchcraft, A Secret History, and Plain Bad Heroines. And look at how beautiful and brightly colored these books are. I've been hearing a lot about Plain Bad Heroines in the booktube, bookstagram realm, uh, and I've heard mixed reviews about it. I think most people think it's pretty good. Um, but like isn't like a five out of five necessarily. Um, I, it's quite long, I've heard that sometimes it can drag, but it's apparently a dark academia book that flashes back and forth in time between the beginning of the 20th century at a girls boarding school and I'm thinking more modern times where a film crew is filming uh, at the school where, at the girls boarding school where I think some of the students mysteriously died. I've also heard it's a very sapphic book. I think every relationship in it uh, is women. So that seems really cool. And also, just the cover is beautiful. The cover is beautiful. That's all I can say. And as I mentioned before, the other book that I purchased from Shroud Books is Witchcraft, A Secret History. Uh, this one is not one that I've ever heard talked about anywhere. I literally only bought it because the bookshop put it in a picture next to this one. And I know they don't match but it just looks so neon and cool. And also, I would love to learn more about the history of witchcraft. I've actually started it. I started it today. I'm reading it at the same time that I'm reading Good Omens. So, you know, some very occult, witchy vibes going on. I'm really interested in the history of witchcraft and how it's evolved over time, and that seems to be what this book is about. Um, so far, I've only read the introduction bit, so when I say so far it's been kind of generic and kind of like surface level, that makes sense because I've only read like the introduction chapter. It's very much based in like historical fact and like it, it's a history book basically. I don't I don't know how else to say it. The book that I purchased when I was in London from uh, I think the Clapham bookstore or bookshop or something like that is Hot Stew by Fiona Mosley. Mosley. The way it's described is pungent, steamy, insatiable Soho the only part of London that never truly sleeps. I, I honestly, I don't really know what it's about, um, but that just, that tagline just really convinced me. It takes place in this like specific house in Soho and it follows like a cast of characters there. This townhouse where a bunch of people live also contains a brothel. The women who live and work in this brothel um, are potentially being kicked out 
due to gentrification and rising prices, uh, but the women won't go quietly, Soho is their turf and they're ready for a fight. But it seems to be a gritty, steamy, pungent um, portrayal of London at a very specific period of time, uh, and it seems like it's going to follow some very strong characters, some interesting characters. So again, honestly, I have no idea what this is about, but it, ju it just seemed really cool. It, this is a book haul. I, you shouldn't be expecting me to know what it's about, but that's what I'm getting from it so far, and I think it looks really good, uh, and it doesn't seem too long, so I am really looking forward to picking this up soon. This is a book I stole from my friend Kate. You may remember Kate from my... Actually, Kate and Megan are the friends from my Isle of Sky road trip videos. Um, but I also stole one of Kate's outfits for my How I Got a Master's Degree in Scotland video. But I did steal one of Kate's books uh, because she told me this one was a really good one and I was looking for some short books to read for a different video. But that is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. I've only heard that it's good and I've only heard that it's short, which is why I have it. I don't actually know what it's about. Out. An unexpected teenage pregnancy brings together two families from different social classes and exposes the private hopes, disappointments, and longings that can bind or divide us. And it takes place in Brooklyn in 2001. See, that sounds really good. I'm already hooked. I'm convinced. I'm looking forward to sharing my opinion about it with you guys once I have read it. So, thank you for your patience. The first book that I stole from Megan is Insatiable by... Daisy Buchanan. It was blurbed by Dolly Alderton, who wrote Ghosts, which I read last year and absolutely loved. However, her blurb just says, filthy. <laughs> Ooh. So this kind of, so the description almost reminds me a little bit of Conversations with Friends, but I think it's not going to be like Conversations with Friends. But it's about this girl named Violet, who is not in a good place in her life uh, and who wants something to change. She would like really anything to change. And she meets this woman, Lottie, who is everything Violet wishes she was. Um, and she goes and hangs out with Lottie and her husband, Simon. And it becomes clear that they are not only inviting Violet into their company, they are also inviting her into their lives. And she is seduced by their townhouse, their expensive candles, and their Friday night sex parties. Insatiable is about women and desire, lust, longing, and the need to be loved. It is a story about being unable to tell whether you're running towards your future or simply running away from your past. Ooh. Uh, the result is at once tender and sad, funny and hopeful. It seems steamy and filthy, but also thought-provoking. Uh, so my guess is that this may be a good one for fans of Fleabag. The next book I've stolen from my friend Megan is The Alchemist by Paul Silo, Paul Colo. It just says, a fable about following your dream. And I've heard really good things about it. It seems like a very popular book. Um, it seems like one that may be inspiring and that may get you to think about your life and like what it means to you and like what really matters in it. I'm talking out of my ass again here. It is an unforgettable story about the essential wisdom of listening to our heart and above all, following our dreams. So this looks like an inspiring little romp and uh, it's short and uh, I could use some inspiration. Uh, Megan highly recommended this. So I'm really looking forward to reading this and I'm looking forward to reading it quickly. The next book seems like a very fun, lighthearted one, and that is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I don't know if it's enemies to lovers, but it seems to be a, like, romantic comedy, like, contemporary novel about this boy and this girl who are sharing a flat and sharing a bed, but because one of them works a night shift and the other one works a day shift, they live in the same flat, but they never see each other. And of course, at some point, they're gonna meet and blah, blah, blah. So it seems very predictable, but very cute. Since they're calling it the flat share and not uh, the roommates or the apartment share, I'm assuming that it also takes place in the UK. And you know I love to immerse myself in the culture while I'm stuck inside, thanks to COVID. So looking forward to reading this one. I need something light and fun and fresh. The next book in my book haul is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed, and oh man, this is such a highly recommended book. Everyone is talking about this book. It's one of those books that came out in 2020 that was on everyone's radar, that everyone was talking about, that everyone really loved, and I am looking forward to reading it. From, I don't know much about it. I know it's about a black woman who is a babysitter or an au pair for a wealthy white family, perhaps, 
and at some point someone calls the police on her because they think she's kidnapping the kid that she's babysitting. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's what I've gotten from hearing about it in book talks and things like that. I think that's how the book starts and then it kind of like devolves and kind of spin, spins out of control from there. That's the hook of the book, but from what I've heard that's not actually like what it's about. Um, and I think it's, I think it may be a lot about like privilege and like virtue signaling and things like that, especially in relation to the mother in the story. So I've heard that it's really good. I've heard a lot of people uh, were really absorbed by the book and couldn't put it down once they started reading it, and I have been needing a book like that. So I'm really, really excited to read this one. The next book in my beautiful pile of books is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton, and I I'm so excited to read this book. I read her other book, her fiction book, Ghost, in 2020. And uh, if you watched my every single book I read in 2020 video, you'll know that I ranked it quite highly. Uh, I wasn't expecting to rank it so highly. I thought it was going to be one of those like contemporary books about love and about being ghosted on like dating apps and stuff like that that like I would enjoy but that I would like immediately forget. I swear I thought about the ghosts book almost every day, and not just because I keep getting ghosted on dating apps. I genuinely, the story stuck with me, the characters were memorable, and it's such an interesting and like thought-provoking take about getting older. But this book is another book by Dolly Alderton, and it is, I believe, a memoir. So it's actually about her life, and it's about everything Dolly knows and learned about parties, dates, friends, jobs, life, and love. I'm really excited about this one because I, I really just want to read some like memoirs from women who are older than me who've like been through shit because I, I wish I had like an older sister figure in my life who could like tell me what's up and like help me work through my problems because I love my family dearly but I feel like I've lived a very different life from everyone in my family. Uh, I'm an expat in a different country. Um, my parents are living in or near like the towns they grew up in. Um, so I, I, I wish I need some like older sisterly advice to help get me through uh, the formative early 20s of my life. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this book, in addition to some others, will fulfill that uh, need for me. So really looking forward to this one. I love Dolly Alderton. Uh, I loved Ghosts, so I cannot wait to read this one. Genuinely so excited about it. This is the first book that I like reached for when I saw it on her shelf. I was like, if you don't let me take anything else, can I please steal the Dolly Alderton one? The last book that I will be showing you today is very different from the other ones. It's a thriller. Um, and this one was another one that seemed to be very popular either last year or the year before. Uh, I can't quite remember when it came out. And I believe the author just came out with, or is currently coming out with, a different book that a lot of people are really hyped for, uh, I think called The Maidens. But this one is The Silent Patient. And I believe it's like a thriller book, potentially with like an unreliable narrator. Alicia Berenson lived a seemingly perfect life until one day six years ago when she shot her husband in the head five times. Since then, she hasn't spoken a single word. It's time to find out why. Now, that really hooked me. I want to read it. And I feel like a lot of thrillers can be kind of hit or miss, uh, but I've heard so many good things about this one, and it seems like a lot of people uh, in the booktube, bookstagram community have been saying a lot of good things about this one. I've been hearing more positive and neutral than negative, which is the sign of a good thriller for me. So this is another one that I'm really looking forward to read. I feel like this will be a good one to pick up if I'm kind of in like a reading slump and need something to just like hook me and like grab me by the throat and not let go. That was weird. Is that like a Freudian slip? Interesting. Very looking forward to reading Silent Patient. My friend Megan has excellent taste. My friend Kate has excellent taste. And you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I have excellent taste. I'm really looking forward to reading all these books. Thank you for watching this video and for coming on this journey with me of books that I hopefully will read in the near future, but probably won't. Let me know if there are any books in particular that you think I should read expeditiously because you really want to hear a review about them, or let me know if there are any books that you think I would enjoy based on these books. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you when I see you. Bye! Cheers, lads.